Public Speaking Project presents Concluding Your Speech by Lisa Schreiber, Ph.D. Voice talent by Nicholas Givens with Rebecca Nyer as the audio engineer and Morgan Hartraft as the media production specialist. Imagine you are sitting at your computer watching a live news feed from CNN.com. The reporter is explaining that there has been a catastrophic earthquake in California. You begin to worry because you have relatives in California. Just as the reporter begins to list the counties affected by the quake, you lose power and your internet connection. As anyone who uses the internet knows, losing a connection while you are in the middle of something can be a very frustrating experience. We also tend to get annoyed when watching a TV program or coming to the end of a book only to be presented with the maddening message, to be continued. When speakers end their speeches suddenly with no conclusion, or with a conclusion that is incomplete, their listeners are likely to be as frustrated as if they had lost an internet connection or were presented with a to-be-continued message. The audience, in effect, has been left hanging. Without a conclusion, the speech will appear to be ill-prepared and unfinished, and the speaker's credibility will suffer. If you watch the video module on introductions, then you know that an introduction plays a vital role by logically and psychologically preparing the audience for the speech that is to come. An effective conclusion does the opposite. It logically and psychologically prepares listeners for the end of the speech. Writing an effective conclusion is important because it gives you an opportunity to reinforce your message and provides listeners with a sense of closure. In this module, we will not be covering all of the aspects of how to construct a conclusion. However, you can find a whole chapter about conclusions in our free textbook at www.publicspeakingproject.org. The purpose of this module is to help beginning speakers learn the basics about how to write an effective conclusion. We will focus on the four key functions of conclusions. First, a conclusion needs to signal the end of the speech. Second, the conclusion summarizes the main points of a speech. The third function of a conclusion is to remind the audience why the topic is important and how it relates to their lives. Lastly, the fourth function of a conclusion is to reinforce the central idea with a clincher or a final appeal. Let's take a look at the first function of a conclusion, to signal the end of a speech. Speakers can use nonverbal signals and verbal signals to convey to listeners that the end of the speech is near and that the conclusion is about to begin. To signal nonverbally that the speech is ending, the speaker may alter her pitch or rate of speech. When you tell a story to your friends over the phone, they can tell when the story is over because your voice signals it. You can use the same technique in your speeches. Speakers may pause for a beat or two after their last main point. Or speakers can physically move back to the same place on the stage where they started the speech. A change in gaze, facial expression, or eye contact might also show listeners that you have presented all of the information there is to present. Verbal statements and phrases are another way to signal the end of your speech. You might say, Before I leave today, I'd like to remind you of the five things you need to know to survive if you are stranded in a blizzard. Transitional phrases such as, Finally, In summary, In closing, or, in the final analysis, can also be used at the start of your conclusion. Be aware that many speakers use the phrase, in conclusion, so, if you want your speech to stand out, you should avoid this phrase in favor of another verbal transition. The second function of a speech conclusion is to summarize the main points of the speech. Don't make the mistake of trying to summarize all of the main points and subpoints of your speech. If you do, your conclusion will be too long. In general, your conclusion should be about 5-10% to 10% of your total speaking time. A summary of your main points is sufficient. According to the book, Learning Maps and Memory Skills, restating your main points helps your audience to remember them. Further, a summary helps your audience tie all of the parts of your speech together so they are reminded of the overall purpose of your speech. To avoid sounding repetitious, you can review your main points using slightly different language than you used in the speech introduction and body. Or, 
If having the audience remember the exact wording of the points is important, you may elect to restate your points using the same wording as you used in your preview. For instance, one speaker gave an informative speech on stress, and to help her audience remember her points, she used an acronym, R-E-L-A-X, RELAX. Each letter of the acronym stood for a technique to reduce stress, and in her conclusion, she needed to stick to the acronym to keep her speech coherent. Listen to this example of a speech summary. So, as you can see, the proposed new tax lax, Proposition 43, will have three negative consequences. It shifts the financial burden off of the wealthy and on to the middle class. It is likely to cause small businesses to employ fewer people, resulting in the loss of jobs. And finally, it will cost each one of you about $370 of your hard-earned pay. The third function of a conclusion is to remind the audience why the topic is important and how it is related to their lives. In the introduction, you should have clearly linked the topic to the listeners' lives. Recall the discussion about establishing WIFM, or what's in it for me. In the conclusion, you need to remind the audience why the topic is relevant to them personally. If you are giving a persuasive speech, this may involve giving an explanation of the personal consequences of not changing a behavior, or reminding listeners of the benefits of taking some action that you advocate. Here's an example of the way a speaker could link a speech on the benefits of a plant-based diet back to his audience. I am not arguing that you become a vegetarian like me, because I know that this is unrealistic for most people. Still, you have seen the research that offers proof that a plant-based diet produces higher levels of health than a meat-based diet. So, don't give up meat. Just eat less of it in favor of fruits, vegetables, grains, and legumes. By taking this simple step, you can add years to your life. The final function of a conclusion is to reinforce the thesis with a clincher or a final appeal. This last part of your conclusion serves as the finale for your speech. Many of the same techniques that you use to get the audience's attention in your introduction can also be used for your clincher. In fact, using the same technique makes the speech symmetrical and provides a sense of closure. For instance, if you used a quotation at the start of the speech, you may end with a different quotation. If you begin by telling a story, you can finish with the story. If you begin by telling a story, you can finish the story. If you begin with a question, you may end with either the same question or a different question. For example, in a speech about penguins, you could start with the question, How high can a penguin jump out of the water to get onto an iceberg? Then, you might end the speech with the statements, Today, we have learned a lot of great information about penguins. And if you happen to be asked the question, how high a penguin can jump to get onto an iceberg, you'll have the answer, six feet. If you are giving a persuasive speech, instead of using a clincher, you may instead make a final appeal to your audience. Asking listeners to change their minds about the subject, see the subject in a new light, or take action on material presented in the speech is also known as a call to action. In his last lecture on achieving childhood dreams, terminally ill Randy Posh asked his audience to change their approach to life. He ended his last lecture like this. So today's talk was about my childhood dreams, enabling the dreams of others, and some lessons learned. It's not about how to achieve your dreams. It's about how to lead your life. If you lead your life the right way, the karma will take care of itself. The dreams will come to you. So let's review. At the start of the conclusion, you verbally and non-verbally signal the end of your speech. You summarize the key points of the speech. You remind listeners why the topic is important and how it is related to their lives. And at the end of the conclusion, you have a clincher or a final appeal. Conclusions are an essential part of your speech, and speakers should take care to spend the time to craft a strong ending for their speeches. A good conclusion will help the audience remember the key points of the speech, and it will reinforce the thesis. Lastly, a good conclusion doesn't leave the audience feeling like something is missing. 
It satisfies the audience by providing a clear sense of closure. Thank you for visiting the Public Speaking Projects Virtual Classroom. To view other modules about speechwriting, go to www.publicspeakingproject.org.